Hi everybody, welcome to the Paranormal Connection. I'm your host, Donna Wilberg. Well, my guest tonight has been here before. He's, he's been a psychic for over 25 years. He's won the Visionary Award of Excellence. He's the author of the international bestseller, The Quest to Row. His name is Joseph Martin. So good to have you on again. I am so thrilled to be here. I love being on your show. Well, I love having you on my show. For one thing, you, you just, you, the color that you bring. <laughs> the other thing is you have so many wonderful things to talk about. Now you are starting a new show. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in this first part of this, this uh, two-part series. So let's start with uh, talking about your show. Well, you know, Paranormal Insights uh, exists because of Paranormal Connection. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> we started here in Sacramento with you, brother, uh -huh. sister show, uh -huh. companion shows. And uh, after about a year, we uh, moved down to the Bay Area to film down there and have been filming down there the last year. And we just started season three of uh, Paranormal Insights. And we just finished filming in season three, the 59th show total so far. And that is something I never would have believed was possible when I first started. That's incredible. And you cover so many different topics, so many different topics. You know, every show, we try to pick uh, uh, what's the latest and best from the metaphysical world mm -hmm. in order to kind of demystify a lot of what's going on. In normal television, mm -hmm. you know, broadcast TV, yeah. you know, for me anyway, they still do a lot of the Ghostbusters, house hauntings. Uh, they, they try to do this scary, you know, knock in the dark, scream in the dark attic thing, and which is fine, you know, mm -hmm. because it's entertainment and I, and I get that. I feel though that for the paranormal, I wanted to have a show that was more like entertainment tonight, but with paranormal topics, so that we could look at these things under the bright light of day mm -hmm. and see how amazing and incredible they are, and that you don't have to be afraid. This can actually be an amazing asset to anyone's life, the paranormal. Right. It's sort of picking apart the uh, urban legend and bringing knowledge into it so that it makes sense. And there's there's scientific information that, that you glean from different sources and, and you, you package this all together and you present it so beautifully, Joseph. And you know, sometimes the topics can be a little bit controversial. There be still be a lot of debate on it. Mm -hmm. And we did a show on chemtrails. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, we were looking at uh, the, the research and the, the reason why that topic is like so confusing for people is because there really are things called contrails, which happens when the atmosphere is disturbed and a temperature difference and it creates like little mini clouds behind an airplane. Mm -hmm. That happens, that's true. Mm -hmm. But contrails tend to only last about 20 minutes and only under specific atmospheric conditions would they last longer than 20 minutes. Chemtrails on the other hand have this trailing effect that often is six to eight hours. And when you see a grid in the sky above an urban area that's been there for six or eight hours, that is not a contrail. That yeah. is, means something else is going on. But you do a show about that mm -hmm. and you find out that when it gets seen, people have really strong opinions about what they think is happening in the sky. So do you get feedback? Absolutely. Uh, we get feedback uh, from uh, different viewerships. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, of course, play in the Sacramento area. We play in the Bay Area. And now we play in the South Bay area, too. We just uh, uh, signed up to be played in another 165,000 more oh homes in the Bay Area. That's wonderful. So people send us emails, they mm -hmm. make comments. Uh, we're also on YouTube, Facebook, and Vimeo, so you can see different things there. Uh, we're working on getting some uh, other things happening too, and I'm hoping that that's gonna work out this year. And people want to know, I think, and especially if the information is presented in a way with a, uh, as little a bias as possible, because you, know, you can never be totally unbiased because mm -hmm. you're gonna have something you think is true, that's why you're mm -hmm. doing the story and that that information will make sense to them. It's not so convoluted or so technical that it's beyond comprehension. So I just, I absolutely love it. And I'm just, I'm hoping to do another 59 more shows <laughs> going forward into the future. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work putting together the show that you do because 
you know, you're just not writing writing scripts. You're researching and you're you're gathering information to present. You know, in in a half an hour. Yes. Yeah, but still, that's that's a lot of a lot of work. You know, getting all the right information and making sure what you're presenting is pretty well backed up. I've been really yeah. fortunate. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple of writers for the show mm -hmm. that help do the preliminary research and uh, writing for the information to make sure it's there. Of course, I go over the writing, and no matter what is written, I write about 2,400 words for every taping, which is two shows. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of times we do three shows at a taping. So uh, there's a lot of writing yeah. involved, uh, more so than I even imagined uh, going into it. Though, I will say this, seriously, I have done a lot of things in my life over the last 25 years. This show has been the most work of anything I have ever done in my life, and yet the most satisfying of yeah. anything I've ever done in my life. Well, that's terrific. And I imagine you're learning a lot as you're, as you're research, doing all this research and presenting this information too, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. I really like the show you did on, on HARP. Yes. That was, I had never heard anything about heart before so that was very enlightening to me and I wanted to know more and I think that's what what your show does not only you're presenting information but you stimulate that that yearning to to know more Absolutely. about the topic that's what we want to do mm -hmm. is you know of course the show you have a limited amount of time so yes. you have to kind of pick and choose exactly what you're able to put in or not put in and then you have editing which again you know to make some sort of continuity of information mm -hmm. though what we really try to do is uh, in my mind anyway, because the show will, uh, after about 90 days, it's available also on the internet or Vimeo or Facebook, mm -hmm. I want to have so much information in the show that people have to stop and rewind and say, I have to hear that again. <laughs> because I want to make sure I get what was just said. Yeah. Because we don't take time to, to, to show how a paintbrush is made. We show how the painting's done and we move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot for people to have to take in, but I think it kind of matches the age we're in, which is the information age. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what are some of your favorite interviews that you've done out and about? You know, I, I, I do have to say, when I was down in Los Angeles uh, for the Conscious Life Expo, mm -hmm. of course that show is just uh, it's huge, huge. This last Conscious Life, it was three floors of the LAX Hilton. Oh my gosh. All three floors. Wow. And one floor was like Hispanic floor with healers and Hispanic language uh, talents and, and uh, uh, people there. Uh, the main floor, of course, which is huge at the LAX Hilton anyway. And then they had a, a floor dedicated to healing, plus you know speakers from all over the world. So I actually got to talk to people and meet people from all, literally, all over the world who were there and some of the real interesting people were those who are actually having their shows on TV right now the History Channel mm -hmm. uh, 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 Alien Hunter uh, oh, uh, is wow. one of them and a lot of people like uh, Les Valles, uh, Sean David Morton, uh, uh, Robert Perala, uh, many others uh, who are there to give their information. Uh, da uh, Daniel Brinkley, who is just such a wonderful man, so caring. Uh, he had the near-death experience, as Daniel mm -hmm. did. And these people are so generous of time, generous of spirit, and they make uh, uh, what I'm doing possible because they are such genuine experiencers who really have something to talk about, whether it's being abducted or a near-death experience or psychic ability or uh, we had a gal from New Orleans who was talking about real voodoo. Oh, that must have been fun. She gave me a little mojo badge <laughs> and it was really cool. I still have it. <laughs> wow. So you're just, you're going from A to Z on the topics in the paranormal. You know, you're not just sticking to anything in particular. You, you're covering it all. I love that. We try to pick uh, different aspects of the paranormal for each and every show. Uh -huh. uh, something that uh, will hopefully, of course, be of interest uh, to the viewers, definitely of interest to us. And each topic, you know, you only have, I think, about, you know, 12 or 14 minutes. So. You, you get to run through a lot of topics and then revisit the ones that are back because of what's happening in the real world. Yeah. Yes. Another part of, that I really love about your show is where you have the, um, the question. 
the audience question. Or the, when you're out and about, you ask somebody a question, and then you sit there and you do a reading. That's always fascinating to me. Now, for many of the shows, uh -huh. I would do my readings live in the studio uh -huh. based on the viewer question, which was on tape. Right. And then uh, my co-host would actually do the reading in advance, usually in another city, uh, beforehand and have that ready for the show. And so I felt it was a really great combination of a live reading to the question and also one where someone actually had all the time they wanted to prepare for the reading. Though the last two shows we just did, for the first time ever, we had two people live in studio and we did the readings live with these oh, people how neat. right on the show and i have to say personally for me uh -huh. i loved it because it was so nice to have the person you're reading for right there with you right in yeah. the other chair oh that's fascinating that's gonna be fun yes lucky them they were happy to be there they had so much fun yeah yes well if anyone out there has ever had one of Joseph's reading, they're always a treat, always. And you you put so much into your your readings with your your designed by you cards and and everything that you that you incorporate into that. So that's a lovely part of the show. I think so. And yeah. the Quest Tarot, by the way, you know, I just called my publisher Llewellyn Worldwide because uh -huh. it's been um, the, the cards, the deck, the book that came out in 2004. And then that year they won um, uh, Best New Age Interactor Product of the Year at uh, the International New Age Trade Show. And so what I was told by Llewellyn when I, they first picked me up, they said, okay, all our stuff, we print three to 5,000. Uh, usually we sell it out in the year. It's never reprinted. And I said, oh, okay. And they said, so well, we're just letting you know that that's the process uh -huh. for most metaphysical titles. I said, oh, okay. So they did that and they printed it. Well, it sold out in less than six months. So they reprinted. Uh -huh. That sold out in less than six months. So they reprinted again. And then they kept my title with them for over 10 years now. Though when I just called to order more, they said, we finally let this go out of print. So my book and deck is out of print. So if anyone is lucky enough to have a copy, oh, no. that is gonna be actually worth more now because they're out of print. Now in two years, I can get the rights back and do whatever mm. I want again. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Wow, are you gonna design a new deck or are you gonna keep what you have? Well, you or? know, designing a new deck is huge. It's yeah. a huge amount of work. Yeah. It took me two and a half years to do all the artwork, plus write the book. And so I, I, that's not where I want to be right now. Um, I love the medium I'm in. I mm. love the, the, the shows. Uh, we're getting ready uh, in about a month and a half. We're going to be filming a pilot of an idea I have, which, I, of course, I have to keep hush-hush. Everyone has to <laughs> sign um, non-disclosure agreements yeah. on right now because we're getting ready to put it all together. But... You know, we're, uh, this direction is something I'm really excited about going. And, you know, who knows? Uh, my mom keeps telling me I need to write another book. So maybe I will. There you go. Well, you certainly have, have been in so, diff so many different um, uh, facets of the business. You know, you, you're a graphic artist, so you, so you, you uh, apply that to your, your cards and, and, you know, you're a psychic, so you, you do all these other things that apply to what you're doing as well. So you've really had kind of a full-bodied a full -bodied experience, and you also uh, present a full-bodied experience to others. It's I interesting like that. that a lot of psychics are artists, mm -hmm. and a lot of artists are psychics. And you don't have to be a painter to be an artist. You can no. be a dancer, a singer, anything in the arts. And I think that that combination is a very natural link. So I, I felt like in my lifetime, my master teachers always said, everything touches no matter what in your life. Uh -huh. And I always thought, oh, okay, sure, whatever. But really, I think for me as getting older, having more years that I've been alive, is everything touches. Someone you know, the, the people down the street, the people at this studio, everything touches. The abilities and talents you have, being able to mesh together to make some, create something uh, new and amazing. And I found that for me, I love that. And I love that feeling of never stopping learning, whether it's being learning about new things in the psychic or paranormal world, mm -hmm. or new things in the real world, because we're part of the real world too. Yeah. 
everything touches, and I love that. I call that the paranormal connection. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, are you starting to kind of like phase out uh, your your readings and and doing your psychic work? Are you uh, not, applying it more to your shows? No, you're still. Well, you know, I'm just crazy. I, I joke with everybody on the set when we're filming, and I always tell them, you know, I'll rest when I'm dead, because <laughs> I'm doing about 40 show appearances a year. Oh my goodness. Plus, during the week, you know, I'm doing my, my work, reading work and uh, design work, my artwork, and I'm also doing uh, sessions in person and over the phone and on Skype for people all over the world. So uh, there's not a lot of dust that actually settles on me these days. Well, that's good. Keeps, keeps you young, keeps you vital, right? It does. Yeah. And, you know, we're in the information age anyway. Mm -hmm. And so this period of time for all of us is all about learning and, and relearning. Uh, in the past, I, I believe, anyway, mm -hmm. um, our parents, our grandparents, you could have a job for 35 years, graduate school, learn what you're doing, get the certificate, go to work for 30, 35 years, retire, you're done. But now, how can anyone get their degree and stay in that job for 35 years, the job changes. Yeah. Everything about it. Yeah. So you've got to keep learning. And that keeps you young, that keeps the mind fresh, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you did mention your quest, which was to get this not only your your next season of Paranormal Insights, but also this little project you're working on that we can't talk about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of true. We <laughs> Not too much I know, yet. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm chomping at the bit because I really, really like what you're going to be doing. Um, so let's talk about what's been the most inspiring experience you've had while you've been out in the field uh, doing your interviews. I think the, the fact that people recognize we're in this uh, transitional period and those people who continue to stand up for truth, honesty, and integrity who continue to say, yeah, the fight's gotten tougher, but I'm not stopping. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who inspire me, even if I don't agree with them. Yeah. I was listening to uh, uh, one, uh, a very controversial talk show host who I interviewed for the show and also have known for a number of years, uh, Anthony Hilder. Mm -hmm. And Anthony has been groundbreaking in what he's done. He, he suffered a bit of a stroke and he's been recovering from that now and getting all back together. I don't always agree with him, that's the truth. However, I admire his energy and tenacity to bring forward information whether or not he feels people are going to agree with him. Mm -hmm. Because the basis he comes from is a platform of really honesty and integrity. He's really trying to do the right thing. And so people like that, whether they're famous or whether they're just assisting the world, they help me feel as though the, the journey still has hope the journey is still worth fighting for and worth doing. Yeah. And I, without them, I don't know if any of us would uh, be able to go forward, actually. Don't you feel sometimes, too, that the information that you're putting out is not meant for everybody? Right. It's meant for the people who, who uh, are meant to have it, and those who don't agree with it or, or don't uh, resonate with it, they just weren't meant to have that information, but there's always somebody out there that, would, that is. So just hitting that one or two people that that are meant to get what you're what you're giving, that's that's progress. Well, you know, I think so your, too. Your it's kind of like you know the whole UFO phenomenon. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, it started out you know you're you're discredited swamp gas, or you were drunk, or you were crazy. Uh, if you were a pilot, you lost your job, you lost your credibility, and. Then what happens, we get cell phones, we get CCTV cameras everywhere, mm -hmm. and we get all this stuff being recorded. What's happening? We're getting UFO recordings from all over the world like crazy. So many that it's impossible to say, okay, all of them are fakes, really? Mm -hmm. There's maybe a thousand new sightings a month. What crew of a thousand people is faking this phenomenon? It's just not possible. Yeah. This, this ability of having cell phones, of having cameras, video cameras, having all this surveillance, I believe is actually going to force the hand of government to come to the light more. And it has. We've seen Brazil release their UFO files. We've seen England 
and uh, France release their UFO files. We've seen Fr uh, Japan release their UFO files. We've seen now Canada uh, release their UFO files and uh, um, the former Prime Minister of Defense uh, for J uh, uh, Canada, Paul uh, Hellier, come out and say, now he's in retirement now, but mm -hmm. he waited until he retired to say that he knows for a fact that his government has been in conversation with four different alien species and that at least four are known to be talking with the governmental officials mm -hmm. of this planet on a whole basis. Yeah. That's incredible. That is incredible. You know, that's a very interesting topic. We could go on yeah. and on talking about that. Maybe we'll talk, address it in, uh, in the next show. But, you know, I, I've, I've thought about this so much. You know, why, why, why? But then again, you know, as, as human beings, we really are intolerant of each other. How are we going to accept another, another race? Well, you know, you President know? Reagan said, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase very loosely, mm -hmm. that wouldn't it be the thing to bring the human race together if an outside alien force were to be introduced into the psyche of our little planet? Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that the reason it hasn't been introduced is because there's already been an alien force around for many thousands and thousands of years, and that they've made deals with the government for technology exchange to some degree, mm -hmm. as well as other things. And, you know, really, you know, if you're dealing with uh, an outside alien intelligent force that has superior technology and they could just like mess with you any way they wanted with, you know, you're going to want to come to some sort of agreement, even if it's not the agreement you want to come to, mm -hmm. because you have to come to some kind of agreement in order just to be able to proceed. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree. I think that, that America is a young soul country. The world is still a young soul world. We just saw with the Malaysia flight being shot down by in the Ukraine, as well as the attacks from and on Israel and from Israel on to other uh, citizens, that our little planet Earth is filled with a lot of children who just happen to be an adult age yeah. doing stupid things. And how do aliens look at us? Well, first of all, they're alien, so they look uh -huh. at us from an alien perspective. Right. But then how do we, they look, must look at us like, you stupid idiot children, what are you <laughs> doing? And how do you come to an agreement with that kind of vast difference? Yeah, yeah. Somebody said to me, um, we, were, we were discussing that, and uh, he said, you know what, we're not worthy yet. Yeah. We are not worthy yet. And I, I believe that's true. I, I, you know, it, it, it saddens me that we can't accept each other and love each other for our differences. Can you imagine, you know, and, and I'm sure that they've got a lot more power than we do. What would we do? I mean, you know, we that would be just a very horrible thing to happen, you know, if we cannot accept them and we attack them, and attack, us, attack us back, you know, then what? It's like, it's like watching uh, Twilight Zone. They used to have episodes about those kind of things all the time, and they made so much sense. You know, at the time, they were probably, you know, a little far-fetched. But now, when you watch those and you think, yeah, that's very true. You know, what would they do? What would we do? You know, it's just not going to happen. So, on to the next. So, we I asked you about your most inspiring um what can we expect to see from you in the future? Oh my goodness. Hi. You know, um, like I alluded to, and I, and I hate to do too many little teasers, but this I just have this one idea for a pilot I've had for years now, and uh, it's finally opened up, I feel, you know, how the, you wait for the doors to open a bit, and there's all these other things that have to happen. Boy, if, if that can take off, I think it's a great idea for entertainment, still involving psychic, stuff mm -hmm. and if I can be involved with that either as talent or as an advisor in any capacity whatsoever I'll just be doing hand springs down the road and skipping singing la la songs I'll be so happy that's wonderful that's where my time and attention is going to be going this year um, aside from that I actually love people and I love reading and helping them. And so the traveling, no matter what I do, is always gonna be part of my life and, and part of my agenda. So you know, I'm open to the universe. We're gonna see where the universe wants to take me and wherever it opens doors for me to lead and go through, you know, I'm gonna do my best to do a good job. Super.
Well, why don't we give uh, everybody your information so they can contact you and you can keep in touch with them so that when this new project just flourishes, you can say, okay guys, here I am. Here we are. Well, you know, I'm easy to find. I'm on Facebook, Vimeo, and YouTube. Uh, you would search for my full name, Joseph Ernest Martin, or the show Paranormal Insights. That's an easy way to find me. Follow me on Facebook. That's a great way to find out what I'm doing all the time. Uh, you can also call me for appointments, and that's 510-387-3328. Uh, and of course, you can visit my website, which does need updating. Something has suffered in all my busyness. <laughs> but you can come to my website, take a look. It's questtarot.com. And that's, of course, with two T's in the middle, Q-U-E-S-T-T-A-R-O-T.com. And uh, those are the easiest ways to get a hold of me. But follow me on Facebook, become my friend. You'll always get my updated information. Sounds good. Great. Well, let's give a little bit of information about the Paranormal Connection. The Paranormal Connection airs the first and third Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Our companion show, Story Connection, airs the second and fourth Thursdays of each month. Each episode repeats the following Friday at 1.30 p.m. and Saturday at 5.30 a.m. Watch these programs online at the same airtimes by going to accesssacramento.org and clicking Watch 17. In the Sacramento region, you can see us on Comcast Channel 17 and on AT&T Channel 99. You can find previously aired shows on the Paranormal Connection YouTube channel. For information on upcoming shows and previous Paranormal Connection guests, go to paranormalconnectiontv.blogspot.com. You can contact us at paranormalconnectiontv at gmail.com. And don't forget, find us on Facebook. Become a friend and become a fan. So, in the one minute that we have left, Joseph, um, I just want to say it's great to have you on, and we're going to continue this conversation, and we are going to be talking about the death of power and the birth of... Ethics. Ethics. All right, everybody. I hope you stay tuned. Thank you to my fabulous crew for volunteering their time to make the show possible. I love you guys, and uh, come see us again in two weeks. Good night. Thank you.